the Southeast Animal Liberation League, or SEAL for short, was established two years ago. And it has already shown itself capable of much more ambitious raids. SEAL claims it can draw on support as and when it's needed, and often from surprising quarters. But even in the 60s, the issue had the capacity to spark off deeply felt passions not normally associated with the phlegmatic British character. In Britain, there are some 500 centres of animal experimentation. world of the animal extremists, passions are running high. Police have to enforce the law of the land. Since last February, specially appointed officers throughout the South have been engaged on a major intelligence gathering operation. By pooling this information, they've compiled a massive dossier on the extremists. And only last week, a special unit was set up to combat what the police perceived as a rising spiral of violence. Very many of the groups, the Animal Liberation League, the Animal Liberation Front, as it calls itself, have upped the ante, if you like. They have increased the level of protest from passive demonstration at various sites to releasing animals into the wild and creating environmental havoc as a result, to attacks on premises culminating, of course, in vicious, unwarranted and totally unjustifiable personal attacks on members of the public, politicians, scientists, etc. The balaclavas conceal young men in their late teens or early twenties. They want to end the use of animals in laboratory experiments. And they intend to use terrorist tactics to achieve their aims. This man told us that he has guns and explosives and that he's now prepared to use them. He said he would kill in the cause of animal liberation. This man says he's being forced to violence because peaceful methods have failed to stop animals being tortured in the laboratories. He too says he's prepared to kill in the cause of animal liberation. A terrifying prospect. What's more, the temptation to dismiss these threats as mere bravado has been dispelled by this week's attacks in the name of the animal rights militia. They were the latest in a series of such attacks in which the targets have been scientists who work in animal research centres like this one in Karsholt and Surrey. Over the last 12 months, several people working here have already fallen victim to the animal rights militia. Here in London, at Scotland Yard, a national team of senior police officers has been formed to monitor the growing menace presented to the public by attacks of this type. In charge of the operation is Deputy Assistant Commissioner Wynne Jones. He feels the public should understand the real threat he believes they now face. They must realise the extreme actions to which certain of these people will, are prepared to go, the lengths to which they're prepared to go to secure their objectives. And, and I think the prospect of increased personal violence is something that, that in 1986 we may well be seeing. It's the dissatisfaction among the uncompromising supporters of animal rights that seems set to fuel the threatening new militancy of 1986. In the South, the campaign will be built on strong foundations. There's already been a wave of attacks across the region. Groups of masked men and women have openly defied the law and broken into factory farms or other establishments considered by them to be guilty of oppressing animals. Responsibility for many of these attacks has been claimed by a group calling itself the Animal Liberation Front, the ALF for short. In the last 12 months, it's claimed more than 30 serious attacks on selected targets across the South, culminating in a firebomb attack on a fleet of butchers' lorries in Dorset just before Christmas. The ALF claims to have 2,000 members nationally. Its official spokesman is Ronnie Lee, a former hunt saboteur who served two spells in jail for attacks on research establishments. He's unrepentant about the organization's illegal activities. Peaceful protest had been given a hundred years opportunity to change things. Uh, people have been protesting against uh, the various forms of cruelty to animals uh, for well over a hundred years. And that protest, be because of the vested interest ranged against it, had achieved so very little that I think people felt driven to do something more direct. 
if people don't do that, it means that the animals are going to carry on suffering. And I would rather see damage done to property than suffering caused to a sentient creature. The ALF claims to be non-violent, but its activities have sometimes caused considerable personal distress. Take the case of Home Office Minister David Mellor, whose house was subject to an attack in 1984. The time when my house was attacked and red paint was thrown all over it, I mean, my wife was pregnant and, uh, you know, it's not the most uh, pleasant thing to come down to in the morning. And I think it's unnecessary. I mean, why should someone like me be subjected to this sort of treatment just because I'm trying to hold the ring? I hear the doctors on the one side saying what they need to do to cure cancer. I hear the animal lobby on the other side saying what is needed to be done to protect animals. I'm just trying to do what I think any common sense person would want to do, to strike a fair balance between the two. But, you know, because I'm not in the camp with the extremists, my family has got to suffer for that. As far as the ILF is concerned, um, our targets are property. Our aim is to cause economic sabotage and to rescue animals. But it, in more general terms, um, what I'm saying is that as far as I'm personally concerned, um, if, if I heard about an animal abuser uh, being injured, then I, I wouldn't have any sympathy for them because my sympathies lie with the animals that they are abusing, because after all, the animals are innocent and the animal abusers aren't.